Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Tonight you are in for a treat. I've taken four of my family's most favorite crock pot meals and I've compiled them all into one video so we can always find them. I've got something for everybody. You're not going to see any soups, chilies, or stews in this video, but don't worry yourself one bit. I've got a whole nother video of those coming. So sit back, relax, grab you some sweet tea, and let me do the cooking in the crock pot tonight. And let's start with the saving grace of every working person. It's a crock pot dump and go recipe. This one is Southwestern Chicken Tacos. Has lots of ingredients that you probably already have on hand. They're also very customizable to whatever your family likes or doesn't like. This is a very versatile recipe. I've sprayed my crock pot and I'm putting in one can of whole kernel corn that I have drained. You could also use frozen corn there. I've got a can of black beans that I've rinsed and drained, and you need to add in 16 ounces of salsa. I had about a 12 ounce container of this fresh pico de gallo. That's what I had, so that's what I used. I just added a little bit of extra frozen onions in there because I wanted it, and you put in a whole packet of taco seasoning. Lots of flavor in here. I'm just gonna take a minute and stir this together and get that taco seasoning kind of spread around over all that stuff I've put in there. I'm gonna take three frozen boneless skinless chicken breasts and I'm just kind of gonna try to bury them under this little mixture here the best I can. They don't have to be completely covered and mine are frozen so they will leave me a little bit extra juice as they cook down so I don't put any broth or anything like that in here. And I cooked it on high for about four or five hours. You could cook this all day on low and it would be perfectly fine. You can see that chicken is very done and tender and I actually just used my little meat chopping tool and shred it right there in the crock pot and give everything a nice big stir. This meal is very similar to another recipe that I'll link down for you. It's a Fiesta chicken, basically the same ingredients, but you're gonna add a packet of ranch dressing seasoning mix and a block of cream cheese. I like to fix mine up like a big taco salad. I put it on some nachos, put some lettuce around the edges there and some sour cream and cheese. And that's how I like to eat mine. You can do so many things with this. It makes perfect tacos, hard or soft shells. You could serve this over rice. You could use this as a filling for quesadillas. This dish is so flavorful and so beautiful. Look at those pretty colors quick, easy cleanup as well. And I will also have you a recipe for every crock pot meal linked down in the description box. Now my husband's very most favorite crock pot meal is his Salisbury steak. The first thing I'm gonna do is mix up the sauce that will go over it, and I'm making about a cup and a half of beef broth, and I just keep these little bouillon packets. You just add water, and it makes broth. Very budget-friendly, and it doesn't take up a lot of room in your pantry either. Into that broth, you're gonna stir in one package of brown gravy mix. This one here is a little bit under an ounce, and that was fine because I just had a pound of meat. Into that, we're just gonna use two tablespoons of regular old ketchup. Gonna squirt in about one teaspoon of some Dijon mustard. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of parsley flakes. I'm just kinda guessing here, maybe a teaspoon. Stir all that together, and then you're just gonna set that aside while you make up your meat patties. Like I said, I'm just using about a pound of ground beef. Into this, I'm just gonna use these dried chopped onions. I just had a little bit of onion when I made this, so I wanted to save my fresh onion to go into the crock pot. I 
I'm also going to put in about a third a cup of some panko breadcrumbs to help hold this together. Going to season it up with a little bit of salt and pepper. Going to give this about a teaspoon of some chopped minced garlic. And just a couple of tablespoons of milk. Finally, just using the yolk from one egg. I'm just going to mix all of this together and get it very well incorporated. And I made four just kind of hamburger sized patties out of what I had. Now, browning these patties is totally optional, but I always like to do it if I have the time. I love to get that color on it, and I like to render some of that grease off for some extra added flavor. Now I am just taking a regular sweet onion and I'm just slicing that up and putting it in the bottom of my crock pot that I have sprayed. And I have even pre-prepped this crock pot recipe at night before, made everything, even browned up my patties and just put them in the crock pot, kept my little uh, broth mixture separate and poured that grease over into it. Then in the morning, all I had to do was pour my little gravy mixture over top and I was good to go. But once you get your patties browned up, just put them over on top of those onions. And you don't want to forget your grease. You definitely want that added flavor in there. And then just pour your gravy mixture all over the top. I have cooked this all day long before on low and it just gets better the longer it sits. You can also cook it on high for about four hours and it's perfectly done and tender then as well. Once mine's ready, I kind of look and think I want to thicken up my sauce a little bit. So I just remove the steak patties and then I'll mix up a little bit of slurry with some flour or you could use cornstarch and some water and I'll just pour that into that gravy and mix it in. And then I turn the crock pot back up to high and let it sit there for about 10 minutes and that will really thicken that gravy right up. Then, of course, I put my steaks right back in there and get them all covered with that gravy. This meal, I cannot tell you how many times I've made it. My husband is not a big fan of the crock pot meal, believe it or not, as much as I love him. He likes meat and potatoes, but this right here, he loves when I make this. This is the best way I've ever found to make Salisbury steak. It is never tough. It always has an amazing flavor, tender and delicious. Of course, I love to serve it with mashed potatoes and cover them in gravy. This is just some instant ones. And I made some brown sugar glazed carrots and just an old can of doctored up green beans. This is a stick to your ribs, warm and cozy recipe that is perfect for fall and our upcoming colder days. What is a crock pot video without a nice chicken pasta dish? This is another one. It is basically dump and go. Simple pantry staple ingredients that most of us have and are very inexpensive and easy to find at any store. This is going to start with some frozen chicken breasts that I'm putting in a greased crock pot. I used about three of them. Now you are going to use a 16 ounce bottle. It calls for the Olive Garden dressing, but this is Aldi brand. You're basically looking for a creamy Italian. I've used many other store brands and it has always turned out perfect. I add a can of cream of chicken soup. Do not forget this. The recipe that I'm going to link does not use this ingredient. This cream of chicken soup totally changes the flavor and the texture of this meal in the most perfect way. It really cuts through some of the tang and oiliness of the dressing, tones it down just a little bit. I'm also going to throw me in a little teaspoonful of garlic. I do not add any salt at all to this because it is pretty salty, but I'll add about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And then I also put about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese.
and I'm just going to give this a nice little mix. It doesn't have to be completely mixed up, I just like to spread it around a little bit. On the very top, you're going to put an 8 ounce block of cream cheese. You're welcome to chunk that up or whatever you want to do. This one, you can cook it on high for about 4 hours or you could put it on low and let it go all day long. You can see how the oily dressing kind of shows up there. That is why I love the cream of chicken to cut that just a little bit. I just go in with my meat chopper. That chicken is perfectly tender and done. And I get all of my chicken breast chopped up and I just stir that cream cheese in and it has been sitting there long enough that that will melt down so easy. Once I get everything chopped up and stirred together, I'm just going to put the lid back on my crock pot and I'm going to let it sit there while I boil up some pasta and make some bread. And I'm using a 16 ounce box of penne pasta. You can use whatever kind of pasta you like or whatever you have on hand. Gonna drain that off and while it's still nice and warm, I'm just gonna add that in to my crock pot mixture. I love the way that the chicken and all of that sauce on it really sticks to this pasta. This is a great dish. It's wonderful as leftovers the next day for lunch or another dinner. Makes plenty. It can really feed a crowd. This is another one of those meals. It is hearty. It is so warm and cozy and delicious. It is so easy to make and easy cleanup as well. I love to use a little bit of real bacon bits on the top of mine. I think it gives it just a nice little pretty touch and the bacon is delicious on there. And of course, I want a big salad with it. Next is a wonderful creamy crock pot pork chops. Again, another dump and go with simple pantry ingredients. We love these. I've just got my crock pot sprayed. Forgive me, I'm working one handed here in the morning, but I did put in one can of cream of chicken soup, and I'm also going to add in one can of chicken broth. You're also going to add in one envelope of pork gravy mix. I've also used chicken if I didn't have pork on hand, and I'm going to put in one envelope of the dry onion soup mix and just stir all of that together. And I like to use the thin boneless pork chops. Just kind of put those down in there and get them covered as well as you can. I like to add a little garlic powder and a little black pepper to mine. I cook this on low for eight hours all day when I'm gone. Of course, you could cook it on high and it would be done in four. I decided to thicken my gravy up with that same little tip I showed you before. This is such a delicious, hearty meal. These pork chops are so delicious. I'm bad to dry out pork chops in the oven or on top of the stove and these always turn out perfect and tender. If you'd like that recipe for that cracked out pea salad right there, I will link that below for you as well. If you found tonight's video useful, I would love it if you'd give it a big thumbs up. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you never miss an upload. If you're looking for some more quick and easy dinner ideas, I'll leave a video up on the screen I think you might like. As always, I appreciate you being here tonight. I don't ever take your time for granted. And until next time, I send you love, as always, from my kitchen. Bye, friends.